Well, good morning, afternoon. Uh, it's good to be with you. This is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana. And this is the weekly devotion for August 22nd, 2022. Today's title, I Can't Wait. I Can't Wait. Depending on the context one might be in, uh, this phrase could mean a lot of things. If one is traveling down the road and someone says in the car, I can't wait, it might mean we need to get off, pull off to the rest stop right away. If one is eager to see what happens next and is full of anticipation, the phrase might be, I can't wait. It might be something completely different, anticipating something good is coming. I can't wait. As you have heard, my son and my daughter-in-law are expecting uh, our first baby. I can't wait. Uh, a couple of days back, we had the opportunity to go with them and see uh, uh, the baby of the 4D ultrasound. Really cool. Viewing, you see the details of face and so on. Um, we could see the baby stretching his legs and stretching his little arms and see his fingers and, and even tufts of hair on his head um, and watch him move around as he swam around inside. It was amazing. The little booger, however, kept covering his face so we couldn't see him completely. Um, I guess he was just too comfortable. But what an amazing thing. It was captivating to watch the little guy dancing around in there. And the experience is certainly uh, uh, has certainly turned up our anticipation of the day that he's coming, which is very soon, be here before we know it. I would imagine that this was the feeling that Abraham and Sarah held in their heart as they anticipated the, the arrival of Isaac. <clears throat> they didn't have ultrasounds, of course, but Sarah could probably feel him dancing around in there and kicking his mom. Uh, Abraham, gosh, 100 years old. She was 90 when they had their first baby. They'd waited their whole lives for this. Uh, and <clears throat> this patience, if you look at Abraham's patience, was firmly planted there by God, and he was ready to wait until God was ready to provide it. Or consider Abraham's grandson, Joseph. Joseph's life was a, a mountain or a marathon of, of patience being practiced. His brothers selling him into slavery, ending up in Egypt, learning to speak the language, learning the culture, learning to, to, to work around Potiphar's house, learning to avoid Potiphar's wife, and then having the patience to end up in prison where he was treated there unfairly, uh, got there unfairly, but he was treated well. He got to work there and the Lord blessed him there until finally he arrives at the right hand of Pharaoh, where his own brothers eventually show up, what, 12, 13 years later, and they're, and they're surprised to see who he is. God, of course, worked his mercy through all of that. And there are others we could talk about, but perhaps one more worth mentioning is Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was full of patience and trust. The angel, when he announced that she was going to be pregnant with the Messiah, May it be to me as you have said, she said. But from conception to her son's resurrection, she remained faithful and she remained patient. And she trusted in him. <clears throat> For many, I know patience is sort of a place, to, uh, something that's kind of thrown at us or placed upon us, whether we want it or not. One of our members has been in the hospital for over a month. And <clears throat> he was only supposed to go in for four days. Uh, he and I have talked about this often as we visited over these month and a half these days, uh, circumstances have, have worked out and how this has all come to be what it is. I mean, and he's admitted, I have struggled with discouragement. I mean, who wouldn't? The physical setbacks, the waiting for insurance to act like it's supposed to, and a fatigue only understood by someone who has a long-term illness, or rather a long-term recovery. Yet he has practiced patience mostly because that's the only option. And sometimes it is the only option. However, patience is never a passive thing. We still hold all the cards in our reaction or our response to what we're, what we're dealing with. You see, <clears throat> he hasn't been just doing nothing while he waited to make be better. He was working towards a goal of getting better. It's always been in his mind, and it's always been his, in, his, in his sights. He's aiming for something. Becoming, a passive, becoming passive about all this would not, would not work in a long-term recovery. He has learned to enjoy visits from friends and to savor those moments. Uh, he's learned how to care for himself and adjust to the long-term 
changes that have come along. Uh, he's learned to live within his limits and made plans to change a few things uh, that um, uh, his experience has brought him and has now uh, also brought him a new perspective on life. Uh, he's made it a point to give thanks to his wife, who's been a, a super trooper. She's cared for him and she's advocated for him on his behalf. She's been wonderful. And today they, they pray together. They are uh, um, they are filled with devotion time and scripture time together. Their experiences that actually brought them closer. His patience has not been passive at all. And in fact, he's been a good example to share with you today. Well, consider now a moment from Hebrews 12.1. Therefore, since we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so eas easily besets us, and let us run with patience the race that has been set before us. The word translated patience in this passage can also mean endurance. In the Bible, patience is persevering towards a goal, enduring trials towards a goal, or expectantly waiting for Jesus uh, to, to bless us all the way to the goal of eternal life. In the case of Christians, it is the goal of our faith uh, which is to be with Jesus for eternal life. That is the goal we're aiming for. So everything has a purpose. Patience is a part of life, but it doesn't just let things happen. It anticipates, it plans, it adjusts, and stays focused on the goal, uh, uh, which is being better, being saved, uh, staying focused on the Lord. Now, James 1, 2 through 4 also says, Consider it a pure joy, my brothers, wherever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces, there it is, produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may mature, be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. James 2 is telling us about perseverance as another word for patience. And it's something that is a byproduct of our um, patience in our process. In scripture, patience is highlighted all the time. It really is. Perhaps the most famous example is in the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15. The father is patient, anticipating, eagerly preparing. He had the fatted calf ready to go, the clothes ready to go, the ring ready to go, the sandals ready to go. At any moment, he was ready to go for his son to come home. He's ready for him. But he was patient in the process, actively so. Patience is part of the Christian experience and part of our Christian character. Patience was a big part of Jesus' own ministry, enduring the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus had to put up with so much, his patience had to be exercised often, but always with purpose. What's more is what is hidden in the patience is often a time of discovery about oneself. One really finds out who he or she really is when he or she has to do a little waiting waiting on something they can't control. It, if it then becomes a time of growth or refinement, such as it was with Job. When our patience is tested our, by our children or a, a difficult family member or a contractor, for example, we often learn how better to endure something, how to uh, deal with the complex and uh, to be a little more equipped than the last time. It's always sort of a learning curve to it. For example, I've learned that contractors are rarely on the job when you need them to be or when you've necessarily scheduled them to be. I've learned that patients can be rewarded uh, with a decent final product. <clears throat> I've also learned that I've, I've had to be like the persistent widow uh, of Jesus' parable, and I have to call often. I have to just expect that. shouldn't be this way. It's a little disrespectful, but this is what I have learned. And so now I don't get too uptight about it. I just sort of prepare for it. I've learned that speaking respectfully goes a lot farther than, than being mean or threatening. And recently my driveway needed to be resealed. Good example here. The company didn't show up on the first day when we had scheduled it. And I never got a call. So I made a call to them. Now this is fascinating because the company was known for being credible and for being reliable. And yet here I was, disappointed and wondering and doubting if I'd made a good choice. <clears throat> it caused me to do that. The second day that they were scheduled to come out, which was uh, about five days later, 8.30 in the morning, they didn't show up. 
Finally, I call them, find out uh, they're going to be delayed. Their truck is in the ditch. Finally, I get a hold of people uh, and, you know, they tell me that. No show, no, nothing for hours. Finally, I decide to carry on with my business only to hear over the phone that they have shown up at five o'clock and they started work and they were there till like eight o'clock. Now they resealed my driveway and they did a good job and in the end I got what I needed. So my patience won out. But all the way along my patience was tested. And tested doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It could mean that we're, out, we're, we're needing to learn something. However, whether it's just being older or just having dealt with these things before, I didn't lose my mind or my temper, thank goodness. Finally, patience is liberating and it's rewarding. Waiting for things is just a part of life. It's just how it is. And usually the best things take time. The best things take time. Our garden is proof of that, an example of that. We grew tomatoes from seeds this year and we've had a, a huge crop. They've been phenomenal. And it's just been fun to go down there and, and see them. Tomatoes, 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 big and small, tomatoes. It's like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> it's been liberating and rewarding to see them grow. But while waiting, we still had to cultivate them and we still had to water them. We had to, we had to do what we could. And then, of course, we let the Lord do the rest. Things grow while we are waiting, right? Patiently waiting, enduring. Not just for gardens, by the way, but also for hearts, souls, and minds. God is active, even when we're not aware of it. God's grace is actively working, even while we are patiently enduring. So, here's my prayer. That the Lord would bless you with a patient mind, a patient heart, with patience. And that you would be blessed in your patience. To know that God is fully active. He's still doing something. But also that you have all the tools in that patience, in that time of patience, to, to grow and to gain what you need. So may the Lord bless you in this, and may you trust in the Lord. And in, uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you being with me. I hope that this sermon, or this sermon, this devotion was a blessing to you, and I hope that you'll be with me again next week. Thanks for being with me now. God bless you. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.